Hi guys, this is William here, the BD manager from Topfly Tech. Today I'm going to share with you our newly released asset tracker 4G TLW to 12B. In this video, I'm generally going to introduce it, the device and I'm going to talk about its use cases and I'm going to walk you through the installation process. This tracker is designed for tracking high value vehicles and assets that may be disconnected from power for some time. So when the asset is standing alone, the power source is not available. The device can still run on its own inbuilt battery for months. When it has access to power, it can be recharged by the DC power on the assets with this cable. So a typical example is using it to track a trailer. And when the trailer is towed by a truck, the tracker can be charged by the power provided by the truck. And when the trailer is standing alone, it can still be running on the device's own inbuilt battery. It fits perfectly when it comes to tracking heavy duty commercial and industrial valuable assets such as dry van trailers, flatbed trailers, containers, construction vehicles, excavator and heavy equipment and etc. It supports 4G Catamaran, MBIoT and 2G network. 4G Catamaran is more widely used. It reports real-time location at a different interval for when moving and when parked because the accelerometer can detect movement and it sends alerts for start and stop moving. It has a large internal battery that can support up to 400 days of battery life without charging and a one location report per day. It's IP67 waterproof and it's tested under 5 meter water pressure for 15 hours. It has got a rod casing and construction, totally capable for outdoor uses. It has also the DLE 5.0 for supporting all our DLE sensors. For example, our temperature and humidity sensor, our door and temperature sensor, wireless relay. Also, it can be charged by a wide range of DC power from your assets through this cable. And it's got multiple uh, inputs and outputs for pairing with the accessories, such as uh, with a relay, with a buzzer and a, a SOS button and fuel level sensor. When you receive the device, you want to bring the device online and working on your platform first. So we need to switch it on. We need to uh, loosen the screws, the four screws on the panel and take out the panel. And we want to switch it on and put the panel back for configuration. For configuration, you can use uh, the magnet USB cable that comes with it and connect one end on the device and the other end to the USB port on the computer for you to use our configuration program that are provided to you. So uh, we need to set up its I APN, IP and port to uh, point the device to your server. Once this is done, we will need to insert a SIM card. So we'll take out the panel again. Insert the SIM card here. We need to give it another power cycle for it to recognize the SIM card. So we need to switch it off and wait for about 10 seconds and then switch it back on. Then we need to close the lid and tighten the four screws that comes with it to prevent water from leaking in. So by now, the device should be online and running on your server. So once it's online, we can then install it onto your assets using the, this cable that comes with it. We we'll need to open the node and plug in this cable. And we need to tighten it by twisting. 
for waterproof. On the other end of the cable, there are 12 wires, they are for different purposes. So it's all listed in this chart here. As we can see, the first two is the red one and the black one. They are supposed to be connected to the power and the ground for recharging. And as we can see, we have three digital input wire that are for uh, ignition detection, uh, SOS button, or for your own accessories. And we have three digital outputs. They are for relay, they are for uh, buzzers or siren or any other accessories that requires it. And we have three analog inputs. These inputs are commonly used for fuel level sensor, especially our own ultrasonic fuel sensor. So with these three inputs, you can monitor the fuel level in three fuel tank. The last one is quite special, the gray one, because uh, <coughs> we don't have it in any other as uh, in any other trackers. So it has a five volt or twelve volt um, power output for powering up the accessories, because when your asset is uh, disconnected from the power, this tracker internal battery can then power up the accessories when it's needed. So when it wakes up to a send location, it can be also powering up the accessories. Okay, finally, once it's set up, you can then stabilize the tracker on the assets. It can be done with the screws that are in the package when you receive it, or it can be done by the magnets, which you can purchase additionally from us or you can use a polyurethane that you can get from the supermarket or you can even use a plastic stripe through this hose for stabilization and please note that if you want to use the removal alert at the back so uh, it has to be completely covered when you install it on the asset so when people pull it off, there's light coming in and triggers the sensor and it will send an alert to the platform to notify you that the tracker is pulled off from the asset. And next to this set, uh, next to the light sensor, there are three LED indicators. They are indicating for the satellite signal, the network signal, and the battery. So when the signal LED indicators are flashing means they are searching for the signal and once it's solid on it means it has already gained the signal and it, these lights will turn off automatically after some time.